Hello and welcome to this Pacifica Graduate Institute webinar. We are going to wait a couple of minutes to let some folks join. But in a moment, I'm going to be introducing you to Dr. Susan Rowland, co-chair of the Engaged Humanities and Creative Life Program. And she is going to be speaking on the Union Arts-Based Research, How Creative Practice Becomes a New Research Methodology excuse me, methodology with depth psychology. And now I'd like to introduce Dr. Susan Rowling, co-chair of the Engaged Humanities and Creative Life Program. Hello, uh, my name is, is Dr. Susan Rowland and I co-chair the Engaged Humanities Program. And what I'm going to talk about is something that we've developed through that program and uh, also now kind of practice and extend through the program. It's also, Jungian arts-based research, it's also relevant to other uh, programs at Pacifica. So I'll be speaking about matters that are um, germane to Pacifica as a, as a whole, but are most focused in practice on the engaged humanities and the creative life. I've uh, been teaching at Pacifica for 10 years, and I'm also the author of a number of books about C.G. Jung, gender, feminism, and the arts. Okay, so I'm going to make a start, um, and uh, I'm going to share my screen and uh, you know, use a PowerPoint. Uh, after I've done um, my talk, um, I'll say something about the Engaged Humanities Programme and there will then be plenty of time for Q&A, whether that's about matters on the talk or whether it's about um, the Engaged Humanities, that's entirely up to you. Please do make use of the Q&A um, box to, to put in questions at what, whenever you want to when something comes up that interests you. Okay, so here we go. And here we are on Jungian arts-based research, how creative practice becomes a new research methodology with depth psychology, which is a bit of a mouthful, but don't worry, I'm going to explain. So as you can see here, um, I've published a new book with the poet Joel Weishouse, Jungian Arts-Based Research in the Nuclear Enchantment of New Mexico. And that too will be explained a little later. But let me start with the big picture because um, creatives, artists, and depth psychologists are very much concerned with the big picture, dealing with the very difficult and intractable, intractable problems that we have today. And so the big picture includes the pandemic, it includes the climate emergency, it includes the struggles in this country over racial justice. And what links all three of those is the the uh, situation that we're in as a result of splitting. And by splitting, I mean all sorts of splitting. It includes a political and cultural splitting. It includes a splitting in knowledge, most obviously between the arts and the sciences. And if we just think about the split between the arts and the sciences for the moment, we, we know that this is not a, an inevitable sp split. And um, I think we have a sense that this is not a, becoming a, a, a split that is not beneficial. And it's not an inevitable split because if we go back into the history of the West, and if we look at other cultures, particularly indigenous cultures, what we call science and what we call art and what we call religion 
these things are not so wholly separate. Rather, they are done in a relationship to each other, a relationship to each other that embeds human beings in the natural world. So one of our um, long-standing splits is the way we've split off human life from the life of the planet. We've created a society in the West where it looks like nature is an op optional extra, uh, forgetting that we breathe air, we walk on the ground, we eat food from the earth. And even more than that, that psychologically, we need to have a relationship with nature. And many of us have discovered this through the last year and a half in the pandemic. The pandemic itself could be seen as uh, a result of splitting, that in being split off from nature, we've enabled um, viruses to proliferate because we've um, messed around with nature without realizing that it, we could be affected by that messing around. And so you get viruses that uh, didn't exist previously. And we can see the um, problems uh, of the splits in knowledge because although science is hugely important and we are now today um, you know, uh, in possession of a vaccine because of traditional science, traditional science that works in laboratories and works on the principle of the subject object split, meaning that the researcher must be split off from the actual research. And this research, this type of research, this type of split subject research has led to all sorts of developments, including the vaccine, many of these that we welcome. However, if we take the pandemic, we can see that the traditional science of the subject object split isn't enough to deal with where we are. Because yes, it's produced a vaccine, but it doesn't obviously produce a distribution plan for the vaccine. That takes a different kind of um, uh, relationship with the world, one that understands how human society works. Even more so, um, perhaps partly because of the way in which we sense that um, traditional science is split off from everyday human life, a lot of people are frightened of the vaccine. And what can change people's minds? Science doesn't have an answer to that, but it is possible that, arts, that art does and that arts-based research also can. So when we take the, the notion of splitting, the most intimate kind of splitting is that between the conscious mind and the unconscious mind. Um, and this is, is something that in, in many ways is not a bad thing because when we are born, we have to um, gradually uh, become aware of ourselves as a different being from our parents. We have to split off from our parents and we do so um, with greater or fewer difficulties. However, if that split is done too um, severely, uh, it results in, in trauma. And arguably, one of the, the problems, a lot of the problems in the world today have been um, caused by our culture overdoing the splitting. 
and including overdoing the splitting between the conscious mind and the unconscious mind. Depth psychology is the psychology that takes the unconscious seriously. And depth psychology arose in the 19th century to address the split in the modern psyche and developed all sorts of therapeutic methods, many of which are studied and taught in the programs at Pacifica. And intrinsic to the depth psychology of C.G. Jung is the notion that um, the, the, the human psyche is inherently creative. And the more we develop this creativity, the healthier the psyche will be. And that's why we set up the MA Engaged Humanities to be a, um, a degree program devoted to using depth psychology and the humanities to develop and stimulate and enhance the innate creativity of the psyche. And it also becomes a method of research. So um, what we're going to do now is look at how um, creative practice, making art can become research, how it's a new paradigm and how it uh, contributes to this thing called transdisciplinarity. So moving on. So we're in, we're in a time of great challenge and great change. And we know this because of the pandemic most immediately and because of the climate emergency. Um, and the, the world of, of knowledge, the world of academic disciplines has been responding to these challenges for the past 20 years. Uh, and one of the responses is directly to address the split in knowledge between the sciences and the arts. And so in the 90s, was begun in the social sciences was this thing called arts-based research. Uh, and arts-based research is additional to traditional scientific research. It is using creativity, the imagination, intuition, the body, and making things as a way of knowing in the world. And we're going to look at a couple of examples of this a little later in the talk. Arts-based research uh, arose in the social sciences, particularly to look at issues in society, studying education, studying social groups. It hasn't um, thought very much about psychology, and yet arts-based research knows that the psyche is the starting place for all works of art. Uh, similarly, depth psychology, Jungian depth psychology, uh, is very interested in the psyche and believes that the psyche is inherently creative, but hasn't done a lot of exploring of the world of art making. So this new methodology puts these two areas together. You have Jungian arts-based research, and whereas Jungian psychology begins with working in a, a small room between two people, an analyst and a patient, Jungian arts-based research is doing therapy with the collective. It, it is doing therapy with the world. And do feel free to ask more about that, because I think it's one of the most important things about Jungian arts-based research. Also, Jungian arts-based research is innately multiple, multicultural, flexible, communicative, and transformative. It does all these things. One of the obvious ways it's multiple is that you can use any form of art making. 
we're not just talking about painting, we're talking about sculpting, collage, we're talking about writing, poetry, uh, we're talking about playmaking, we're talking about performing, we're talking about dancing, we're talking about theatre, we're talking about music, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Arts-based research is a new paradigm. Um, now this means it's a new way, uh, a new framing of uh, what makes knowledge, knowledge. So traditional science is in a paradigm of a subject object split and the idea that um, uh, experiments need to be repeatable. Um, and that's a paradigm, as I've said, is still going and still doing good work. But it's also doing the thing that makes the problems, which is the idea of splitting human beings off from each other and splitting them off from the world of nature and splitting the psyche between the rational thinking part and everything else. So arts-based research is um, a new paradigm in the sense that the art, the artist is doing the research. The artist in doing uh, the art is also doing research. So the, the researcher is in, intimately involved with the research project. And yet what is made is a work of art. And the thing that make the thing about a work of art is it leaves the artist, it goes into the world. It can go anywhere in the world. It can last for a very long time in the world. And it keeps adding meanings because what art means is not reliant upon the intention of the artist. The art itself continues to generate new meanings. Arts-based research also is very interesting when it comes to technology. Technology is again something that's become split off from the human psyche. And arts-based research returns technology to the arts and crafts because that's what techne originally meant. And again, that is something we can talk about. Arts-based research is Jungian with the image. And the image is not something we see. Here, the image is something psychic, something internal, a message from the deep psyche. Uh, it can be um, a dream or from a dream. It can be a feeling, uh, it can be uh, a, a very kind of deep intuition that's hard to put into words, but it's the beginning of the work of art. And both arts-based research and Jung, as I've already said, say that the, the creative process is intrinsically knowledge generating. So arts-based research is an investigation into language via the essential communicative, rhetorical and transformative properties of art in any media. And I will explain a bit more about that later. Now you'll notice on the left, there are a few more words here. Uh, and I want particularly to pick out transdisciplinary because I said this was all about challenging splitting as the best way to be in the world. And transdisciplinarity is um, a way of challenging the splitting of knowledge into different competing disciplines. So we're in a culture that values some knowledge highly and other knowledge like knowledge in the arts and humanities, not much. Transdisciplinarity, as I will show, is um, a way of getting away from a hierarchy of knowledge, which means 
it's getting away from knowledge splits. And that is related to getting away from psychic splits. So I am going to say a bit more about transdisciplinarity because Jungian arts-based research is transdisciplinarity and it's a good way of doing transdisciplinary research. So uh, here I'm following the work of a quantum physicist uh, called Nicolescu, who describes transdisciplinarity as a rejection of any hierarchy of access to the truth amongst academic disciplines. No branch of science, no one psychology, philosophy, art or humanities subject can claim to be more true than any other. While different disciplines construct and or explore different realities, none of these is more fundamental to who we are and how we know. Rather, the cosmos is made up of different kinds of reality and so are human beings. Above the presumed superiority of the subject object split in knowing is, uh, is yes, above all, the subject object split is explicitly denied by transdisciplinarity. And it looks a bit like this. So arts-based research and transdisciplinarity challenge what research is. Research is not just science or something that tries to look like science. They both offer a new paradigm beyond science and the quantitative qualitative uh, aspects. They undo the hegemony of the subject object split and the scientific method. And they focus on the third or the Jungian symbol between the subject and the object. Now this is more straightforward than it sounds. You can see that if you have a subject, me, object, my computer, there are two things there. But what about what's in between? Um, what's in between is the third, the third thing. And the third thing connects the subject and the object. And in depth psychology, what connects the subject or the object is known as the symbol. And arts-based research and transdisciplinarity invoke invisible, multiple and multicultural realities, as I've mentioned, and they join tradition and existing forms of knowledge structured in disciplines. One of the great things about transdisciplinarity is it includes all those types of knowing that universities refuse to take account of. So it includes indigenous ways of knowing. It includes body-based ways of knowing, things like yoga, meditation. Um, it includes ways of knowing through religious practices and ways of knowing through the heritage of art. So, so the scientific paradigm is the first three of these that science posits existence of universal laws of mathematical nature, that these laws can be discovered through scientific experimentation, and that these experiments must be able to be reproduced. That's the subject object split paradigm. Instead, transdisciplinarity says uh, that there are multiple levels of reality of both the subject and the object. And we know this because we subjects have the reality of our conscious mind and the reality of our unconscious minds. And, you know, maybe more realities beyond that. Secondly, the logical axiom, which is the included middle or the hidden third, that's the Jungian symbol. And thirdly, the epistemological, epistemological axiom, that it is complexity because all levels of reality exist at the same time. I'm not gonna go into complexity theory. 
you may have heard of it, you may have heard of emergence theory, you may have heard of systems theory, you may have heard of chaos theory. All of these describe the way new things occur when very complex systems are activated. One of the most complex systems in, that we know about is the human mind. And it, is, it does include this, how creativity works in generating newness as the artist begins to create. And that is something that we explore uh, in Jungian arts-based research and in the program. So recap, <laughs> Jungian arts-based research is intuitive, um, you, meaning that it draws upon the archetypes of the collective unconscious. Um, it draws upon uh, things like dreams and active imagination. Um, it is also cultural because it engages in the traditions and history of art. And these traditions and history are, of art are, are actually embedded in the culture. Um, and Jungian arts-based research is independent of the artist. So it uses very deep psychological modes like the symbol, like active imagination, which is a way of working with the unconscious image. Um, and it produces art that generates, continues to generate meanings even once it's left the artist. It is communicative of cross cultures and histories and is transformational. So art can communicate across cultures. It's not a matter of what's the real meaning of, of, of the work. It is, it is a matter that the work continues to generate many meanings. So if we take an extreme example of the ancient cave art, we have no idea what those people were like and what they thought about the cave paintings they did. And yet, this art continues to enrich us and provoke us to imagine more and see more and be more. And it's transformational because art activates the whole psyche. So with art, we are, our psyche is more alive and uh, conscious and unconscious begin to work together. And Jung called this individuation and he, he saw it as important for psychic health. And Jungian arts-based research is a separate paradigm from the scientific method. Okay, so um, these, this is a very interesting and very useful idea, uh, which is to have four ways of understanding what a piece of arts-based research is doing, uh, or four types of things that an arts-based research project might do. And they are here analytic, synthetic, critical activist, and improvisatory. Now, analytic arts-based research is thinking in materials. It's when the artist is doing art to explore the potential of those materials, to explore, uh, a painter might explore what paint can do, uh, might be doing something very experimental with paint, uh, experimental with sculpture experimental with words uh, in, a, in a poet. And we'll see an example of that later. Um, it can also be synthetic, which isn't artificial. It means synthesizing different discourses. So we have different parts of a culture, different languages in a culture, different languages of different disciplines. And these 
uh, art quite often brings different languages into a new relationship with each other. And again, we will look at an example. Thirdly, Jungian art space research can be critical activist. And this, of course, is, is extremely exciting. We all know that art can be activist, um, but it's something more when you can see it as activist research. So there is a, a making of new knowledge through that critical activism. And very often uh, a Jungian arts-based research researcher will work with social groups or will take art out into the street um, in, in, in many ways, make the project an intervention into the world. Improvisatory is uh, fairly self-explanatory that um, an arts-based research project can improvise in the art medium. And that can be very illuminating, searching for sources of spontaneity. This is very um, interesting with a depth psychology Jungian perspective because depth psychology is very interested in psychic improvisation, the ways in which we can access some of the deeper energies of the psyche that are, um, that are outside everyday consciousness. So let's look at some examples briefly. Um, and here's an example. Uh, my own uh, project is uh, of, art, of Jungian arts-based research is novel writing. And I've chosen to use the genre of detective fiction. And we have a novel. Um, I'm going to, I'm not going to spend much time on this because I want to do a couple more things and have lots of time for Q&A. But just to say, yes, writing a novel can be a form of research, particularly when you're exploring something where not a great deal is known. And I wanted to explore the relationship of modern people to the ancient Celts of whom not a great deal is known. But we do know that they were a culture that were very embedded in the land and regarded um, nature itself as, as sacred. So I wanted to explore what might happen when modern people become very attracted to this way of life and how their modern traumas and problems clash with this um, imagined ancient way of being. Uh, and I, and I, I also particularly, uh, for example, wanted to write about women as heroes, the kinds of women who are not normally portrayed as heroes. Um, now this is a bigger project and the, the book, Jungian arts-based research contains the entire Jungian arts-based research project called the Nuclear Enchantment of New Mexico. And um, it's, it's actually an epic poem. Epic is a very old um, uh, genre, but it's an epic poem that is done in a very different way. Um, and I'm, Got a couple of slides, which is just about information about how nu nuclear weapons manufacture is uh, very embedded in the state of New Mexico. And here you can see that on the New Mexico border uh, with, with Mexico and Texas, there are a lot of very dangerous sites as a result of nuclear weapons manufacture. And we don't talk a lot about nuclear weapons in this culture um, to the extent that you could argue there's a kind of psychological block because here we have weapons that can destroy the planet and we don't, we prefer not to think about them. And what I think is exciting about this project is 
when you have an arts-based research project, a Jungian arts-based research project, how could you possibly tackle something as big as nuclear weapons? Well, it is possible. This is a slide that lists some of the problems uh, persisting in New Mexico, including um, the way in which the Navajo nation were treated and how Navajo workers were exploited. And this is all freely available information on the web today. Okay, now this is uh, one of 40 texts that makes up the nuclear enchantment of New Mexico. And we won't read it now. You will have a chance because this is being recorded, you will have a chance to, to look at it um, in, in more detail. But you can see that on the left, we have discourses of knowledge. Um, we have knowledge, uh, traditional forms of knowledge that pertain to nuclear weapons. So we have history, we have mythology, uh, we have science, uh, and um, we also have um, ancient history. Um, we have a, a sometimes a history of the Native Americans, history of, of New Mexico itself. There's even quite a lot about evolution. Um, there's also geology and bot um, botany. So we have all these different knowledges um, and then we have the poetry on the right. And the poetry brings the different knowledges together. This wonderful piece of Jungian arts-based research is a chalice that unites the split psyche. Because one of the things that we're very split up about is nuclear weapons. They were made as a result of the subject-object split. And we have to not be split off from them because the more unconscious we are, the more likely are they to be used unintentionally. So this is a, a, a really important and powerful piece of Jungian arts-based research. And there's a couple of slides of it on this uh, PowerPoint. So here's further reading, but I do have a couple more slides to show. Um, here's another example from uh, the nuclear enchantment of New Mexico and talking about why, what is it, what is it in our psyche that drove us to create missiles? and uh, to be obsessed with, with flying in that way, for example. And this is about, tells you a little bit about the author of the nuclear enchantment of New Mexico. And I put this here because Joel Weishouse, who has a, a long history of um, poetry and digital, literary art um, is also artist in residence to the hybrid programs, including the engaged humanities. So he's part of Pacifica. He's part of these partly online programs. He is available to talk to students about their individual creative projects. Um, and uh, I want particularly to recommend his um, digital archive. The address is here. And um, the, on that, in that archive, it's, it's freely available to the public. Uh, under projects, you can see 30 years work of Jungian arts-based research. Now, arts-based research itself was not formulated till uh, about uh, 20 years ago. But like many artists, art sometimes anticipates the way a culture is going. Jung said this, and 
Joel anticipated the development of Jungian arts-based research. And he has wonderful projects about the climate emergency, about uh, the cosmos, um, and, and so on and so forth. Here are several of his books. That's not all of them. Uh, you can see on his website in the digital archive a complete list of his work. So um, we come to the program that I co-chair with uh, the wonderful artist, Dr. Mary Wood. The MA in Engaged Humanities and the Creative Life is a unique MA because it's dedicated to developing, discovering, enhancing and sustaining creativity through the three pillars of Jungian depth psychology of the creative imagination, the humanities as a series of disciplines about how humans have made their world and creative practice. On this program, students do creative practice as part of discovering themselves, as part of discovering the world, and ultimately as research. They do Jungian arts-based research. It is a degree that is particularly effective in developing skills, resilience, community and activism. It is transformational through transforming. Art transformed at, transforms and artists are transformed through their art. And it's for artists, teachers, activists, eco-activists, therapists, makers, lifelong learners, do-overers, entrepreneurs, ex-capitalists, humans and post-humans, and those who want to learn about all of these and more. So I'm gonna stop sharing and we have a chance to have some Q and A. Okay, thank you, Dr. Roland. Now let's get started with the q and I see one question here and just as a reminder, the Q&A box is at the bottom of the screen. You can click it and feel free to ask any questions to Dr. Roland. And we also have um, Daniel Valdez here as well. So the first question is for Dr. Roland. Mm -hmm. When doing ABR, is there the challenge or danger in trying to be successful as both a piece of art and a piece of research? The danger of it failing as both. Each endeavor can be extremely challenging all on its own. Is there a challenge in ABR being taken seriously as art and as research? That's a great question. Um, and to a certain extent, this whole area is really quite new. And so some of this would be kind of argued out, but it brings up a very important point, which is everybody can do Jungian arts-based research. Not everybody is going to be successful in the world as an artist. So you don't have to have a, a, a particular talent for an art form in order to do uh, research using that art form. So um, clearly you're, you would, you would um, embed yourself as much as possible in the art form, but the research is to do with the topic and how the art making would impact upon the topic. So let me give an example. Suppose um, you wanted to explore a meadow. Um, you wanted to do an ecological piece of research uh, through arts-based research. And you might um, look at different ways of, of understanding the meadow. Um, here in California, um, you, the obvious thing is one would look up um, the plants on the meadow and, and the birds and the animals, but you might also 
look at the history of the meadow as uh, a piece of land that was originally part of a Native American settlement and Native American ideas. And you might talk to older people who knew about the meadow over a period of time um, and how it had been used in the past and how it might have changed now there is a road there with cars going along. Okay. Now, none of this is necessarily arts-based research until you go to the meadow and start drawing it, start sitting there and drawing it. And I could do this even though I'm totally crap at drawing. But if I embedded myself in the meadow and allowed the meadow to come to me through my intuition and my dreams and the sensations in my body. The drawing might, it might be uh, dismissed by the world of art, but the drawing would say something about the meadow. It would say how I was responding to the meadow. And so it could go on and be a successful uh, arts-based research project um, on those terms. On the other hand, you don't have to be totally untalented to do Jungian arts-based research. You might come to um, a research project already being successful as an artist. I know many successful collage artists, for example, uh, who've worked in collage for years and have reputations as artists, but they too um, would slightly change perspective in order to do Jungian arts-based research. They too would be um, immersing themselves in whatever the topic was they might be working with a group of people. They might be continue to work on their own, but addressing a particular subject, allowing the unconscious to be part of the process, and then looking at the work itself, looking at it in relationship to other types of collage art and seeing how it continued to generate new meanings. So there is a, a sort of issue here around um, is arts-based research uh, art that happens to be research or research that is done through art? And it's the latter. It's, art, it's Jungian arts-based research and um, how you can do it, whether you are expert or fully trained in a particular art form or not. Jessica, we have other questions, don't we? <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'll answer one for admissions really briefly. Somebody had just asked about this program in rela relationship to licensure. So um, the Engaged Humanities program is not a licensure track program. Although we do have some folks who um, might do this master's program and then further go on to do another PhD program, such as the PhD in clinical psychology is licensure track. Um, so that is one way that folks do it. I can okay. also say, I can also say that I gave a talk to the counseling program. And uh, the counseling program is not primarily focused on art as, as you would know. However, they are interested in including um, Jungian arts-based research in their research methodologies for the master's thesis. So it is possible to do this uh, for a counseling student uh, who gets a license um, to um, do this kind of research in the latter part of the program. And I see there's a question about art therapy. Um, and yes, this is not art therapy. It is, 
Uh, I'm, it, it's not, it looks a bit like art therapy, but it's not because it's research, it's not therapy. So the thing about, the thing that distinguishes art from art therapy is that artists make art and art therapists do therapy. The therapy comes before the creative product and the therapy drives what people do. Um, and whereas arts-based research uses everything possible about art in the research process and as part of it is concerned to create an art product. And I hate the word product, but what it means is you make a piece of art that can go on out there into the world as art and can generate new meanings. And that doesn't happen in art therapy because art therapy is about the therapy and what is generated is private and it's to do with um, private inner world matters. And you're not thinking about creating a work of art and having it in a dialogue with other works of art. And, and then um, we do have another question that's in the chat box. Um, they were hoping you could expand more about the idea um, of JBR being research first and foremost mm. through the arts. Well, it it's. It's, it, is, it is about trying to heal the wound in knowledge. The wound in knowledge created by splitting knowledge into so many different types of knowledge and how some knowledge has been devalued, um, including transformational knowledge that you uh, of the psyche that you gain through making art itself. So it's it's research because we don't give up in saying this is new knowledge that can be uh, can and should be supported by the academy, that it can contribute to knowing about how to make things better in the world, um, and. That's why it's, it's always research. Um, it's art, but it's art as, as, as research. And in a way, it sounds strange because we're so used to art being marginalized and put to the side in our society, but it's really not that different from painting in the medieval world when it was all about the glory of God. And the glory of God, knowing God, appreciating God, loving God, that was all, that was the kind of knowledge that was valued then. It's not, it's also, I think, a way of connecting with indigenous knowledges where art is about research in, 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 our, in, in our terms. Uh, it's about becoming whole, it's about, uh, it's about, um, connecting with the spirits, connecting with the ancestors. So, um, I hope I hope that helps. <laughs> and thank you, Dr. Roland. Um, so, this person has a question about the subjectivity yeah. of experience and art. So it is the last two questions, but the question is, we create and experience art differently from each other. Wouldn't the subjectivity of our experience affect the truth that comes out of our research? Would it make the knowledge we produce through this research less true? Yes, it would affect the truth. No, it would not be less true. Um, because we're, we're in a paradigm that is um, regards subjectivity and differences as, as um, truthful. Um, and the great thing about art 
um, and I, I've tried to stress this, yes, the artist has her subjective view, but the art that comes out of the artist, because it is Jungian, it comes out of the unconscious as well as the conscious mind of the artist. The art is full of psyche and that psyche is a human psyche like other human psyches. It's not all of it about the personal, the personality or the ego of the artist. Far from it, the Jungian frame makes the art full of psyche uh, that contains many things that the artist is unaware of. The art goes into the world and is encountered by lots of different people. They have their psyches activated by the art and their subjectivities will be activated by the art and they will have uh, truths which are slightly different from each other. And these truths matter because if we are to heal the splits in our culture and heal the splits with nature, we've got to be able to navigate a, um, a world of many truths and many different kinds of truths. And that's where transdisciplinarity comes in. And that's the benefit of this kind of research methodology. Great, thank you for your answer. So let's take one last question. The last question is, would this program support exploring consciousness through music? Absolutely, um, absolutely. Um, uh, I, uh, I'm not particularly musical myself. My sister, however, is a music therapist and uh, is all now going further with her music into Jungian arts-based research. And we've had musicians on the programme who have used the programme to explore their relationship to music, including composing new music, including collaborating on composing music. Jungian arts-based research is, is works with any art, including arts that we haven't yet thought of, um, uh, but music, definitely. <laughs> Great, thank you so much, Dr. Roland, and thank you for your presentation. We are reaching the end of the webinar. So with that, I would like to thank everyone for joining.